Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We are talking CitizenCon 2953 summaries today and Destination Adventure is the panel I'm going to be talking about in this video. This covered a few different things. Distribution centers, which are giant new points of interest with lots of sort of missions going on there, the hubs of activity, lots of cool stuff there. Evolutions of cargo gameplay and the freight elevators, as well as some really cool stuff with base building. Base building is coming. Distribution centers. So these are massive locations, probably the largest locations outside of planetary landing zones. They're currently in gray box and Cloud and Pyramid building them out. And with everything we pretty much talk about citizen wise, they plan to bring it into our hands within the next 12 months. So this is going to support multiple ships and vehicles and players all being at these locations at once. They include road networks as well. Obviously, the roads aren't hugely extensive connecting um, sort of multiples of these distribution centers or other cities and things around, but they may in the future. These will be owned by factions too. So um, if you've got a particular a rep with a faction, you're going to get better missions there. You're going to um, have more opportunity. They have archetypes as well. So a UEE distribution center, those missions are likely going to be focused on combat and maybe logistics orientated. Grey Cat, those centers there, they're going to be more industrial focused, maybe cargo hauling, resource gathering. They're going to have more limited security on site and you might have to do lots of maintenance jobs there or something. These huge locations are going to be hubs of missions and activity. There are sort of basic admin areas and there's landing pads in front of the like lobby area. There are elevators to help you get around these structures. The atrium in the lobby has a reception desk and as a newcomer you'd go there. As you get more rep you'd get access to more floors, levels, offices, more mission givers, more exclusive stuff. They showed landing at the facility, entry into the main lobby, reception, a more sort of elite office and employee kitchen, meeting area. These sort of structures are supposed to be realistic with the facilities they have and if they maybe have their sort of staff staying there. They talked about raids which are currently going to be unique to these kind of locations. So this is more for team focused gameplay kind of quite high risk, high reward. Um, you'll have to choose how you approach attacking the structure because it's quite free form. You can come in from the roof, you could come in from potentially the basement or whatever. They said in the future they could be having subterranean levels for these. They also then showed a prototype of a raid very early. Um, so you'll land at the location wherever you choose and then you'll take out the guards, avoid turrets, take out the turrets maybe. In the sort of a demo they showed there was loads of civilians around and some of them got caught in the crossfire. They showed off one of the new hovering cargo trolleys. Uh, they grabbed a load of cargo and they loaded it onto their ship before escaping and assumedly the cargo is quite valuable. Now obviously you could do some prep work before trying to work out where valuable cargo is and maybe there's certain boxes with certain numbers on that um, have more valuable loot, things like that. Dynamic events might be triggered during raids like more enemies might come along and um, sort of as reinforcements maybe you can prevent that and uh, there could be pvp as well and um, it could call in um, other people other people might just be there for the free-for-all they want various gameplay puzzles multi-tools being used and um, environmental puzzles lots of stuff to do during those raids they show using the tractor beam to build a bridge using cargo boxes but i'm expecting um, the ability to research the facility beforehand maybe do some espionage get some codes to dispense things steal key cards to open doors, things like that. I feel that these sort of raids and things are inspired a bit by payday, but you've gone loud from the start. There are cargo and freight improvements coming too. Hauling contracts. So there's the Interstellar Transport Guild, which you'll be able to join, and, and there's various hauling companies you'll be able to do jobs for. And the higher your reputation that you have, the more lucrative and more expansive contracts that you might be able to have. And there's going to be loads and loads and loads of different types of cargo and, and risk versus reward types missions. So there's hazardous cargoes, perishables, fragile, high risk routes, time sensitive cargoes. So yeah, tons and tons of commodities and property that they're going to be adding to them from volatile to illegal to awkward size but it also might be as I said fragile containers or um, you might need to control the temperature power might be an issue um, a container might be able to be hacked can you prevent it from being scanned is it radioactive is it explosive many of these sort of different types of cargo crate will be very visually distinct as well so if you're fighting a ship and you can actually see an explosive crate on it attached to the side. Maybe you want to shoot that to cause some extra 
damage. As with other factions in the game, the more rep you get with these sort of missions and these different mission givers, um, you'll be able to get access to some exclusive um, rewards from them. So different flare items, sort of more interesting branded clothing, branded ship skins, stuff like that. But also they might give you access to um, more range of items in shops and discounts on specific items. Freight elevators are coming. They're going to allow you to spawn your cargo at a landing zone and then move it between the landing zone and your ship or vice versa. They showed a demo of them using a freight elevator to spawn 960 SGU of cargo and then move it between the, the actual elevator and the ship. You'll have to consider how you pack your sort of cargo. I suppose only one way. You only want to you're only concerned about packing it from the elevator into your ship. Because when it goes into the elevator, it doesn't really matter because you're sort of trying to effectively despawn it. Using the Gravlev trolleys and that sort of stuff is going to help a load as well, especially with larger ships. But you can also use the freight elevators in hangars to spawn vehicles. And that means we don't need vehicle in ship spawning. This is the solution for that. You spawn your vehicle literally next to your ship in, in a hangar and then just drive it in. There are new inventory boxes to store items and equipment too. Um, personal hangars are going to be persistent, so your personal hangar will be persistent. I'm not sure if you'll have a personal hangar in every location. You very well may. Um, you need to interact with kiosks to spawn what you want on the elevator, obviously, and you will be able to do all the maintenance you want to your ship in your hangar switch different items and weapons around, invite other players to your hangar, all that sort of stuff. Build your own home in the verse. Oh, this was exciting. They showed a demo of base building, placing buildings for storage, mining, power, hydroponics, farming, um, medical facilities is what we saw. There's probably some other stuff there that I missed, um, but basically they talked a lot about this and you'll need to plan your base location where you want to sort of have it uh, and what you want it to do. So. Um, do you want it as a base of operations in an area? Do you want it for resource gathering? Do you want it for crafting? Do you want it for living off the grid? Do you want it just because it's pretty? To build a base, you'll need blueprints. Um, you can get these blueprints from uh, various shops, reputation rewards, um, mission rewards, things like that. You'll also need materials, which you'll collect from around the universe, common, unrefined to complex components based on what you're trying to build. Where you're trying to build is a big thing as well. So you can go for something that effectively means that your base is invulnerable. You can go for high security, low security, or no security areas. High security areas, effectively, your base invulnerable. Um, you put a land claim there, you need a land claim in high security areas because they're basically owned by the UEE or whatever. You get full protection from UEE forces, but also it sounds like they are entirely invulnerable, those buildings there. As long as you pay your taxes and fees, um, you won't have a problem. But obviously, if you fall out of that, your sort of base will degrade, assumedly. Now, these sort of bases, they're relatively high cost and typically low return. It is going to be dependent on how you use them and what you use them for, but they're not going to be sort of like resource abundant areas. There's then low security locations where you can place your base. You again will need a land claim and you'll get partial protection from the security forces there. So they'll turn up and come and protect your um, claim after a certain amount of time or whatever. Uh, and potentially that will get progressively more and more uh, forces will turn up to protect your stuff. Um, there are taxes and fees associated with that. And they're a nice balance there. Medium cost and medium financial return, sort of roughly. Also, players can build defenses, so you can build defenses to help slow enemy forces down while um, your sort of um, UE or security forces are coming there, there to protect you or, or you're trying to get online to protect yourself, or whatever. There's also no security areas. So these are the best in terms of potential financial return. Very, very low cost, if any um, sort of maintenance costs there's no land claims required and there's no protection or taxes payable. You'll have to build your own defences entirely to protect that and protect it yourself. There are cross shard considerations that they will address later in development for how bases are going to work. Now, bases, you will be able to build them even if you're just a solo player. So they're going to range from um, supporting solo players all the way up to massive orgs. You'll be able to use a surveyor tool and sort of like some other minor equipment to build small structures. So you can build a base basically just as a solo dude running around. If you want to go a bit bigger, there looks to be a dedicated base building vehicle, which builds small to medium sized structures. The Galaxy can build 
small to large structures, assuming that it's actually been outfitted for base building and, and structure building. And then the Pioneer can build up to extra large structures and buildings. Cloud and Imperium are now talking about things that you might be able to build in space. They're going to be exploring what is buildable and craftable and um, sort of deployable in space. Hopefully that will mean space stations and that sort of stuff in the future. Sounds cool. Land claim wise, um, when you want to sort of deploy a land claim, you'll go up to the area that you want. You sort of like launch a probe and it will show you the taxes and the fees um, and uh, some information about the land. And then bam, you can go into your blueprint mode and you can sort of plan out your base uh, and all that sort of stuff. And then um, at that time, it doesn't look like it will cost you anything when you're sort of planning it out. But when you actually put the materials in, it will start crafting the buildings. They talked about fabricators as well. So fabricators will allow you, um, based on the size and type of fabricator, to build decorations, but all the way up to ships. So crafting at this level is awesome because this means that my dream of having org battles in like places like Pyro are potentially real and uh, as I expected, which would be you are trying to deal with org in an area and um, you're trying to push them out of that area by finding their base because then you're cutting off their ability to, to resupply, rearm, refuel and uh, get reinforcements. Uh, so you want to find their base and destroy that and that will push them out of the area effectively because you can keep on resupplying and they can't or at least not as easily. There's going to be loads of different types of building you can sort of build from storage to shops to extractors, power generators, living areas, producer buildings, defense stuff. Base building is going into active production Q1 of 2024. And remember, Clan Imperium are expecting some form of playable thing in our hands by the end of 2024 for base building. Boom! That's your summary of Destination Adventure, the CitizenCon 2953 presentation. It was fantastic to see base building actually being talked about and potentially going to be in our hands in some form by the end of next year. Loving those distribution centers, like big locations where I can um, sort of do missions out of and stay planet side, because it looks like a lot of this content goes, you can stay planet side, you can do a load of stuff planet side if you want. And raids just sound cool. I like payday. I like things that give me rewards based on how risky I want to be and how long I want to stay in there. And I love loot. And freight elevators, freight elevators are cool really good way of dealing with cargo and physicalizing that. But what do you think? I'd love to know what you'd loved from that panel. Are you excited for base building? Are you excited by something else? Whatever your thoughts, tell me in the comments below. Do you like using your eye holes for extra immersion in Star Citizen and help aim and do some cool stuff? Well, you can with Toby Eye Tracker 5, which is on sale at the moment. This gives you native high precision head and eye tracking in Star Citizen. Very cool for general immersion, for combat, both in ship or on foot. They are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit, and both Zin and I have one. Use the links below to grab one for 15% off or to find out more. What the hell are you? It's NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer, enabling you to minimize your presence on the internet, almost like a cloaking device. It also allows you to hunt out the best TV and movies and shopping deals by changing your region. It prevents big internet from gathering and using your personal data. There's even a data breach scanner and mesh net for your own remote private network included. When Zinn asked, what's the Predator movie got to do with NordVPN or CitizenCon or Star Citizen? I said, what's any of our NordVPN ads got to do with anything? Grab yourself NordVPN in the links below for a seamless, secure internet experience. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway. For October 2023, we are giving away a Constellation Phoenix. This luxury multi-crew ship can be used as a mission runner, an explorer, a base of operations, and more. It comes with a luxury P-72 Archimedes snub, as well as the Lynx rover, allowing you to have on and off planet excursions. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. This is the bit of the video where I appeal to you to try and join the channel memberships and give us money. We have a load of you that are Patreons or have become YouTube channel members with the join button under my videos. And that goes a huge way in helping the channel and enabling us to make daily Star Citizen news entertainment. But there are a load of other ways to help us. Liking, commenting, sharing these videos. That helps the channel grow. Thank you for watching to the end. Please get involved in the comment section and I hope you have a great October.